We're getting pretty close to go time on the old uh, Scout Camper Pickup Extravaganza, eh? Let's see, when did we place the order? October? No, September? September. So it's what, like, to like six months of waiting? Seven months? I don't know. We're excited. To catch everyone up, in about a month, we are going to be driving from where we are now, <laughs> Detroit, Michigan, uh, all the way across the country, literally, to just outside of Seattle uh, to pick up a Scout Olympic truck camper. We were actually looking at a van, you know, like van life situation, um, but it didn't quite fit in with our like our life. Like, you can't. Like, we just couldn't buy like a whole ass van like that's as nice as we wanted and also have a car we also didn't want to drive the van as our daily driver we didn't want to buy an old van and build one because then like you know if you're in the middle of nowhere and your van breaks down you're kind of effed we were at like the one dealer rv dealer in the country that had a scout uh there for us to look at so we looked at it and we're like mm, let's get one plus we have this perfectly usable f-150 and even though we're not leaving for like another month we're getting married uh right before this so our weekends after this point, up to the point we get to the camper, are completely packed with wedding stuff, which is exciting. We're getting married, yay! Woo! Um, it's now the truck is a 2021 F-150 XLT, I think. Just kind of a base model, it's nothing special. The cool thing about Scout campers is they're designed for half-ton trucks. You can actually get one that's designed for like light duty truck, I don't know what you call them, Tacomas, Rangers, that sort of thing. They have campers that'll fit that, it's pretty crazy. For ours, we went with the mid-size Scout Olympic. We'll show you some pictures here. Right, pretty sick. So they're minimalist, they're lightweight, and they're kind of streamlined to the fact that you can put them on a smaller pickup truck. There are a few considerations. Number one, you gotta check your payload capacity. So the Scout that we're getting, I think weighs about 1,700 pounds. The max payload for my truck, it's very hard to find max payload, all right? You're gonna go through a whole rabbit hole of how to find the max payload for your truck. What I did was I called my dealership that I bought this from, and they told me the exact rating that came from the factory for this specific truck. They're all gonna vary slightly. That's the best thing to do. You can look online, they're all gonna change. My truck has like, the max trailer tow package on it, uh, which doesn't really do much for capacity. You're looking for payload. You wanna find the max payload. I think mine's about 23, 2200 pounds. Okay, as promised, here's a list of everything I've done in my truck to get it ready for a Scout camper. Number one, I got new tires. These are BF Goodrich KO2. Now, I have strange dreams, but my childhood dream was always to have a set of BF Goodrich KO2 tires. I don't know why, but hey, we're here. I don't know, I never knew there was a KO1, but hey, these are twos. Now, this is very important because these are E-rated tires. You need to have E-rated tires to have a big camper on the back because that thick boy is gonna pop your regular tires, all right? They're not ready for what this scout's about to do to them. So keep that in mind. These are 275, 70 R18s, which is just under 34 inches. That's the largest tire size that my truck can handle without having to have a lift kit. Do your own research. This is what I found works. You could probably go a little bigger if you really tried, but I like this size because it's not too big, especially with the extra weight on the back. I don't want to have to worry about rubbing or anything when we're going off-roading. So this was a good size to me. I think it looks great compared to stock. Just a little bit bigger, more aggressive. Still got a good enough gap. There's no, there's no issues with rubbing anywhere around here. So it's a good size, it looks good. I think it makes the truck look pretty badass if you ask me. We installed, well I didn't install, I had installed two airbags on the back axle. Basically what happens is they remove the bump stops and they put the airbag where the bump stop went. So now, instead of your axle being able to go all the way out of the bump stops and you know bottom out basically, you have this cushion of air that keeps your truck riding level. You can go up and go down and you can level your load so that you're driving safely and you're not like, you know, squatting in the back because we don't want that. There's a few different ways you can work this. Now the cheapest way to do this is just put the airbags in and run a line so you can fill it up with an air compressor at like a gas station or in your garage and you can just fill the air springs up and level it that way. The other way to do it, which is what we decided to do, 
is have a compressor mounted on the truck so you can go up and down by remote control. So this remote connects via Bluetooth to a compressor that's mounted underneath the frame of the bed. And it's probably my favorite thing I've ever put on a vehicle. So right now, it's at 10 PSI. I can just press this button. This whole system cost about 12 to 1400 bucks. The air springs were about 650 bucks, as well as the compressor was another about 650 bucks. I actually bought it all off of Amazon. I don't have any links for you. Go do your own research. The caveat is the installation. So the airbags themselves are pretty straightforward. You likely do it yourself. I'm not much of a mechanic. I don't like to get greasy. I like to just get covered in sawdust. So I opted to have a shop install this system for me. The manufacturer states it's a two hour install. The manufacturer lies. I went to a local shop around me. They did amazing work. Awesome guys, highly recommended. Shouts out to Mac Garage in Detroit, Michigan. The airbags themselves, pretty straightforward. Now, the compressor install, I never would have been able to do myself. I think it took them about 12 hours to install the system completely because there were not clear instructions from the manufacturer. They had to wire everything in. There was no wiring diagrams. Part of the issue was this truck is newer-ish. So there's not a lot of information out there about how to wire a system like this into it. So beware when you buy that, uh, you're gonna have to do a lot of either, a lot of DIY yourself, a lot of research, or you're gonna have to pay a lot of money to have someone install it. I don't really regret having the system installed because to me, having the compressor on board with me, so if I'm in the middle of the woods and I need to raise or lower the truck, I don't have to worry about bringing a compressor or finding a gas station. To me, that was worth the cost. So all said and done, the system cost me about 1200 bucks for the parts, and I think about 1100 for the installation. Obviously, that's gonna vary. Um, if you take it to the shop I went to, they probably do it faster and cheaper, because they know how. So make sure to do your research, talk to the shop uh, before you you know commit to having them install it, because that could be a bit of a shocker when I was expecting a two hour uh, labor cost versus a 12 hour. But uh, you know, hey, it wasn't their fault. I should have done more research. That's it, that's literally all we did. And I didn't even do any of it, I just had it done. Uh, Cause I've got soft hands. So now comes the DIY portion of the day. We have to get the bed ready for a camper to go in it. So here we are. Who needs a camper when you can just sleep like that? Honestly, it's pretty comfy. The bird shit makes a nice ambiance. How did a bird shit inside there? I don't know. I don't know. So we gotta take this and this, remove them, gotta put this down. Now this is the purpose of the video today. This is a bed mat. So what you gotta do, you gotta get rid of any like plastic bed liner, and you gotta put a rubber mat on the bottom to keep the camper from sliding around. My friends at Black Armor Bed Mats were kind enough to send this bad boy on over. They sent this to me like, three, four months ago, and I haven't made a single piece of content about it because my tailgate was broken for like two months. And then, I don't know, I just got distracted. And they haven't been dicks about it. They've been really cool. So, Black Armor, here's your content, buddies. Missed you. Thank you. We love you. Let's get it put in. So, this is... I would say this is top three most confusing mechanisms ever created. First time I've been under here, um, this is broken. A few months ago, my truck got broken into, and they must have tried to smash through this tonneau cover to get it open. I mean, it's still functional, so I just gotta undo this, and pull this off, and it should lift right up. Look at that. Pull it off like this. Oh, shit. That's pretty easy. Okay, step one complete. That was actually much easier than I expected. Gently set that there. Those crooks must have hit it with a hammer. That sucks. Probably my hammer that they stole from me. Very likely. They tried to hammer in there. They also had a, you give them a crowbar. Also give them a crowbar. Lucky bastards. Well, good thing they didn't get in. Yeah, that would have been like another thousand bucks worth of tools in there. Or more. Or more. What are you doing? Hi. Hi. I'm uh, pulling out these little trim clips off of here so I can pull this bed mat out. Okay. I think now 
we just kind of fold it up into the middle. It feels so unhelpful. Ah, you're doing a great job. Okay. I need like a long piece of wood. One sec. I'm gonna grab this two by four and shove it in like this. So everything lifts up. Okay. Doing good, doing good. Halfway there. Can you push up on that? This? Yeah, push up on that. Like harder? Yeah. All right. Nice. Free. Tough. Luckily I had that plastic, you know, bed liner in here. Otherwise, you know, it might be all scratched up in there, which would suck. So I think we're gonna take this to a car wash to like wash out the back of it, just all these leaves and all this dust. And then start fresh with the black armor. What do you say? I'm stoked. I'm stoked too. Thank God we had a five dollar bill. That was less quarters than I expected. Didn't seem like five dollars. Didn't seem like five dollars a quarter. Place on tailgate with label side down and unroll towards front of cab. It's, we're well on our way. I mean, I think that's the front of cab. Yeah, this is cab. Death front cab. of cab. Death cab for cutie. Nice right. scissors. Oh uh, yeah, safety first, obviously. Look, we got a piece of paper. <gasps> Free paper, nice. Thank you, Black Armor. Thanks, boys. Thanks for the patience on that. I'm excited to get it out of the house. Yeah, it's been sitting in my office for months. You know, it could have went to the shop. Could have, didn't. Oh! Ah, there we go, look at that. Backwards? So I was wondering if the front, what's the front of the cab? The front of the cab is that, right? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Take two. Well, I'm dumb. So we're flipping her around. This thing is thick. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I think you're gonna need my help. Oh. Look at that. So I think we did it. I think we're ready for a. Uh, camper yeah just gotta drive you know 8,000 million miles to Seattle but huge shout out to Black Armor this thing honestly that looks even if I wasn't gonna get the camper I would definitely get one of these because that is 100 times better than the drop-in bed liner that the factory gives you and also like a rhino liner is like a million dollars I think last time I checked one million one million dollars and I don't have that kind of cash because I just bought a camper. The texture's really nice. I don't think stuff's gonna slip around. Let's do some long-term testing on this bad boy, but first impressions, what do you think? It's great. Went in easy. Went in easy. And I feel like it would come out very easily too. Like, you know, it's gonna protect, it's definitely gonna protect from that crap happening because the stock bed liner, it's just not the vibe, you know? It's not the vibe. Oh, oh hey, sorry I got distracted by the comfort and support of the Black Armor bed mattress. Well, there's a lot more natural light in my bed now, which is great. You know, I feel like that was something that was missing earlier. It was real dark in there. It's gonna be tough for me to put like dirty stuff in my bed now, cause this is so nice, I wanna keep it clean. Yeah. But it, honestly, it's removable, so you could probably just pull it out when you needed to. And I think you could actually wash it. In the like washing machine? Wash, in the washing machine. Yeah, you can throw it in the washing machine. That was the last thing we had to do in prep for the Scout, right? There was nothing else? We just gotta drive there. Just gotta drive there. Truck-wise, we're good. Oh, we gotta get married. We're gonna do that soon. Oh, yeah. I'm busy that day. Are you? So the next time you see this truck, there's gonna be a Scout camper up here and up there. We'll be sleeping here. 
So shouts out to Black Armor Bed Mats. Shouts out to Scout Campers. No shouts out to Airlift unless you know they want to change their mind and you know send a check. The next video will be us picking up the camper out in Yakima, Washington. So subscribe, watch, follow, share, tell your friends, tell your mom. We'll see you then.